Hmm. Good morning. Happy Monday to everyone out there. I'm Michelle. Thank you for listening to me um, and watching me this morning. So today I wanted to um, let you know what my next step is in my personal growth journey. And that is my thoughts on diving into uh, minimalism. Now, I think when some people hear that word, they've probably already turned me off at this point. Because <laughs> um, minimalism can be scary. There are so many broad, there, there's no one definition, I think, for minimalism. Some people think when they hear that word, to be a true minimalist, you have to count items in your life that are important and come up with 50 and then that's all you can own or a hundred and that's all you can own or really extreme 10 items and that's all you can own and that's not what I'm talking about here I know deep down I don't think I could ever do that you never say never I just don't feel that I could live that limited however there are ways to practice minimalism that is completely rational it's not as popular with my age group. I'm 47, my husband is 50. The age group that I'm seeing that practice minimalism seems to be primarily late 20s to mid 30s. They seem to be the most, sorry, I'm looking out the window, I saw a head. <laughs> they seem to be the ones practicing minimal, minimalism. However, I think if you really thought about it, <clears throat> our older generation, the ones who lived through the depression, they were the true minimalists. So all you hipsters, whoever thinks you coined that phrase minimalism, talk to your grandparents and great grandparents because they knew what it was like to live with the bare necessities. And that's kind of what minimalism is. It's learning how to live with things that you need instead of things that you want. Now, how did I decide to start practicing this? It was probably two, two big reasons. That's four, two big reasons. Um, I don't know if you could call them big, but there was two things that just happened that made me think, you know what, Michelle, you're not living your true beliefs. As I've started on this personal growth journey and I've learned how to love myself and I've learned how to take care of myself, I mentioned that that's changed how I'm um, approaching other people. The love I feel for other people, uh, how I want to um, just connect with other people. And sometimes physical things can really get in the way. You're so busy in your own little bubble, buying, thinking you want when it, thinking you need when it's only a want, and so focused on yourself that you, you kind of exclude the people around you. And not that I was guilty of being a spendthrift. I wasn't. I'm not a shopper. Y'all know that. I don't go to a mall unless I have to go to a mall. I don't just window shop. I'm not one to shop online. With the exception of Amazon, I do buy some things on Amazon, but most of the time it's stuff that I consume, um, such as hair products, skincare products. Um, Mike and I spend money on travel. Um, have we bought souvenirs? Yeah. Did we need them? No. It's a lot to think about when you start this journey. So that's, that's where it started with me is how is this stuff that I just keep buying that I think I need getting in my way? And then number two, I started to think about consumerism. All the stuff that we do buy and how it has affected other people. And it's, it's really enlightening. If you like pick a random item, okay, here for example, my napkin basket. Um, this might not have been a good example because it doesn't say where it was made. Um, I got it at, I'm pretty sure I bought it at Target. 
So more than likely, it originated in China. And I may have spent, I don't know, $5, I'm going to guess, um, on the napkin basket. So you think to yourself, it's $5. $5 is nothing. I needed something to put napkins in. So this was a need and it wasn't expensive. So that's how we justify it. But think of how this started. It may have only cost you $5, but if it came from China, was it made using child labor? We don't know because uh, obviously they're not going to advertise it. Oh, an eight year old boy made this for you. That's not going to happen, but it's a distinct possibility because you know that stuff exists. So the abuse of children to make the cheap products, and I'm mainly speaking of those of us here in the United States, because we tend to be the biggest consumers of anyone in this world buying mostly imported merchandise. So you are okaying child labor, then the resources it costs to get this basket to your house. You have the packaging, you have the shipping containers, you have the amount of fuel it costs to get this item from mainland China to the shores of the United States. Then it has to be unpacked and loaded on a truck and then carried to God knows where to a warehouse. And then from there it gets unloaded and put onto another truck to be distributed to the store that you're going to drive your car to, to go buy it. So see how it just snowballs. And that was what hit home with me. That hit home. And that's where I'm, working on improving myself and taking care of myself that includes taking care of others is how much damage am I doing to other people and the environment around me by justifying cheap material goods. Now we need stuff to be alive. I get it. You can't just live with nothing. You could, the cavemen did it, but it's a little hard in today's society, <laughs> but it comes down to that one question. Do I need it or do I just want it? And that's where my minimal, minimalism journey is beginning. Obviously you can see around me in this little short video that I haven't emptied my apartment. However, I'm going to take you on a two minute tour. So let's go. Okay, so those of you that have been watching me for a while, you're familiar with my apartment and how I have stuff in it. So again, fully functioning kitchen with what I consider necessities still out and about. Sorry for the glare from the natural light, but the sun's finally coming out. It's been so dreary here and it's still chilly. Um, what goes there? Oh, all the bowls that get stacked there in the dishwasher right now. Sorry, that doesn't normally appear empty. That has stuff in it. Dining room. Dining area, not a separate room. I moved my table, yes. So again, I'm just doing a quick little tour here. My apartment is not empty. There is still plenty of things, including a chihuahua. Say good morning. My office slash dressing area, since I can't fit my dressers in my bedroom. Spare bathroom has not changed at all. My bedroom. Sorry, I left my closet doors hanging open. And my bathroom has not changed at all. Now, I'm going to show you something new. Okay, we're downstairs in my garage now. So forgive the lighting down here because it is not the greatest. But all this stuff, these bins are full. This stuff here is just empty boxes with newspaper in it right now. But that bin is full. All the stuff on the table. Now don't look at the false graph. This was not mine. 
my father got rid of this and gave it to me and said, do whatever you want with it. So I'm trying to sell it. This, all this, and all this stuff on the floor, everything all in here, all this stuff up here, and I haven't even gone through everything else. I still want to go through the items on here. That is all stuff that I don't need and I'm getting rid of. Now I will break it down into, in future videos, how I decided what to get rid of and what to keep with each section of my home. It was difficult when I started, but once I started, it became so easy. Just so easy. I just started letting go and it was almost a sense of freedom, not having the stuff in my life that believe it or not, weighs you down. It does. Um, which has also changed my spending habits. I literally don't want to spend money. I don't want to. I just don't have a desire. Mike even was carrying on with me last night. We were sitting outside on the deck. Let's go back upstairs because it's dark down here. We were sitting outside on the deck after dinner and we're just talking and hanging out. And he says to me, so you wanna go out and spend some money? And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, literally, no, I have no desire to spend money. It's like, you know, he works darn hard for the money we have. So why do I wanna blow it on things? If I'm gonna spend money, I want it to be on experiences. Does that make sense? I'm gonna put you back on the tripod here so I'm not so shaky. Sorry, no, I just almost dropped you. Ow! Dang it, Michelle. <laughs> but if I do spend money, it now is on consumables, as in food, things that I will actually use instead of things to decorate or just to have and think I need it to do whatever with. Um, my money spending thinking has completely changed. And again, I'll get in more detail as I do future videos, but I just wanted to just give you a preview of some of the videos that are going to be coming along, just like I did with the, the food video the other day that you're going to see my cooking changing a little bit, but it's still yummy. Tonight we are having pork. Um, so yes, I am not a vegan hippie hip hipster guru. I haven't done a complete 180, but there are things in my life that are changing that I am thoroughly enjoying and it has made such a difference in me mentally and emotionally and physically because I've hit the 20.8 pound mark for weight loss. I'm not trying. I'm not exercising whatsoever. Mike and I actually went on a walk yesterday afternoon, but he can't walk far with his plantar fasciitis. And I couldn't walk fast because I had the dog strapped on my back and he's heavy. <laughs> but just a leisurely walk. We don't exercise. Not that we shouldn't, we should, but we don't. So to be down 20.8 pounds, not trying, there's a several factors that have played into that. Just the little tweaks I've been doing to my diet. I'm not starving. I eat. Um, and I think just letting go of the emotional baggage when your body is stressed, when your mind is stressed, it, you know, it's, it's making the cortisol and it's, that's going to keep your weight on and just letting go. The fat's letting go. I'm just letting go of the fat. So, and not that I have a goal. I'm not on a diet. I didn't wake up one day and say, hey, I need to lose 50 pounds. No, I've just changed my way of thinking. And that's all it was. And it was a light bulb moment, total light bulb moment. It wasn't um, something that I'm having to force myself to do. 
So I'm going to wrap it up here for the day because as usual, I've probably talked way too long and lost your attention. I hope not. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for watching and join me on or continue watching me on my journey because I'm excited. I'll see you soon. Bye.